The seven-segment light-emitting diode is one of the most widely used display devices found in counter circuits. This is due to its long life, low voltage requirements, ruggedness, and the fact that it can be plugged into an IC socket. The seven-segment LED has eight PN junctions labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and DP that emit light energy when forward biased. Seven of these junctions are used for decimal numbers 0 through 9, and one junction is used for the decimal point. The typical forward voltage for each segment is 1.2 volts, and the forward current limit is usually set at 20 milliamps. By turning on the appropriate LED segments, any of the decimal numbers can be displayed. For example, by activating segments B and C, the decimal number 1 is shown. By turning on segments A, B, D, F, and G, the decimal number 2 is displayed. Or by energizing segments A, B, C, D, and G, decimal number 3 can be displayed. To display decimal number 4, segments B, C, E, and G must be activated. Decimal number 5 is displayed when segments A, C, D, E, and G are turned on. Likewise, decimal number 6 is displayed when segments A, C, D, E, F, and G are energized. And decimal number 7 is displayed when segments A, B, and C are turned on. Decimal number 8 is displayed when all of the segments except DP are activated. And decimal 9 is displayed when segments A, B, C, E, and G are energized. We can also display the decimal zero by turning on segments A, B, C, D, E, and F. The decimal point is energized when displaying more than one digit or when a number smaller than one must be shown. As you can see, by simply energizing the appropriate LED segments, any of the decimal digits, zero through nine, may be displayed using this simple device. The LCD, or liquid crystal display, is another popular seven-segment display device. Unlike the seven-segment LED display, the LCD segments do not generate light. Instead, they transmit or reflect light from external sources. As you shall see, there are two types of liquid crystal devices. These are the transmittive and reflective. Even though their operations are quite similar, there are major differences in their constructive techniques. The molecules in ordinary liquids normally have random orientations. However, in liquid crystals, the molecules are oriented in a definite crystal pattern when not activated. The liquid crystal will appear transparent. However, when an electric field is applied to the liquid crystal device, the molecules try to align themselves perpendicular to the electric field being applied. The charge carriers flowing through the liquid disrupt the molecular alignment, which creates a turbulence within the liquid. This molecular turbulence causes the external light to be scattered in all directions, which results in the activated area changing colors. This phenomenon is referred to as dynamic scattering. The liquid crystal cell consists of a layer of liquid crystal material made from such compounds as cholesterol nonanoate and p azoxazanosol sandwiched between glass sheets with transparent electrodes deposited on the inside face of each glass sheet. When both glass sheets are transparent, the cell is known as a transmittive type cell. Whereas when only one glass sheet is transparent and the other sheet has a reflective coating, it is known as a reflective type cell. When not activated, the transmittive type cell simply transmits the rear or edge lighting through the cell in straight lines. In this condition, the cell will appear transparent. However, when activated, the incident light is diffused forward and the cell will appear quite bright, even under bright ambient light conditions. The reflective type cell operates from an external light source. When not activated, light is reflected in the usual way from the mirror surface, which causes the cell to appear transparent. However, when activated, the dynamic scattering phenomenon occurs and the cell will appear quite bright. 
As you can see, the primary difference between the transmittive type cell and the reflective type cell is in the method by which the light source is applied and in the construction of the device. The operation of the liquid crystal display is almost identical to that of the seven segment LED display. By controlling the separate segments of the LCD device, it can be made to display decimal numbers 0 through 9. The recommended supply voltage for the LCD device is a 30 volt peak to peak 60 hertz square wave. The operating current is typically 125 microamps. The major advantage of the liquid crystal display is its obviously very low energy requirement. Another common display unit is the dot matrix display. The dot matrix display is a rectangular array of light emitting diodes consisting of a 5 by 7 or a 7 by 9 pattern. The dot matrix display must be used with a character generator that selects the designated diodes to be activated at any one time to display any one of 64 characters. You will learn more about the character generator later in the video. Since the dot matrix display has a rectangular array of diodes, the display must be scanned one row and one column at a time to display a single character. To better understand how this display works, we will examine this simple circuit. In our example, we will illustrate the uppercase letter A. When the character generator scans the first row, the LED in column 3 will be high. Therefore, the LED in column 3, row 1, will be energized. Next, the character generator will scan row 2. As row 2 is being scanned, inputs on column 2 and column 4 will be brought high. This allows the LEDs in column 2 and 4, row 2, to become energized. The character generator next scans row 3. As row 3 is being scanned, columns C1 and C5 will become high. This allows these two LEDs to turn on. Next, row 4 will be scanned. When row 4 is scanned, inputs on columns C1 and C5 are brought high. This causes the LEDs at column 1 and column 5 in row 4 to illuminate. The character generator next scans row 5. When row 5 is scanned, inputs on columns 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are brought high, which results in these LEDs turning on. Next, row 6 is scanned. As row 6 is being scanned, inputs on column 1 and 5 are brought high. This allows these two diodes to turn on. The character generator next scans row 7. As row 7 is being scanned, a high is placed at inputs C1 and C5, which results in these two diodes being turned on. During this example, the rows were illuminated one at a time, since this is the system by which the character generator functions. However, the scan rate is so fast that all the LEDs in the unit appear to be activated at the same time. As you have seen, the individual LEDs are controlled by the inputs being placed at the row and column inputs. The dot matrix display has become popular due to its ability to display both alpha and numerical characters. The dot matrix unit also has the ability to display many other common symbols. Most character generators have the ability of providing 64 characters. The 64 characters displayed by the dot matrix unit are contained in a read-only memory which is contained in the character generator IC. Another common display unit is the dot matrix display. The dot matrix display is a rectangular array of light emitting diodes consisting of a 5 by 7 or a 7 by 9 pattern. The dot matrix display must be used with a character generator that selects the designated diodes to be activated at any one time to display any one of 64 characters. You will learn more about the character generator later in the video. Since the dot matrix display has a rectangular array of diodes, the display must be scanned one row and one column at a time to display a single character. To better understand how this display works, we will examine this simple circuit. In our example, we will illustrate the uppercase letter A. 
When the character generator scans the first row, the LED in column 3 will be high. Therefore, the LED in column 3, row 1, will be energized. Next, the character generator will scan row 2. As row 2 is being scanned, inputs on column 2 and column 4 will be brought high. This allows the LEDs in column 2 and 4, row 2, to become energized. The character generator next scans row 3. As row 3 is being scanned, columns C1 and C5 will become high. This allows these two LEDs to turn on. Next, row 4 will be scanned. When row 4 is scanned, inputs on columns C1 and C5 are brought high. This causes the LEDs at column 1 and column 5 in row 4 to illuminate. The character generator next scans row 5. When row 5 is scanned, inputs on columns 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are brought high, which results in these LEDs turning on. Next, row 6 is scanned. As row 6 is being scanned, inputs on column 1 and 5 are brought high. This allows these two diodes to turn on. The character generator next scans row 7. As row 7 is being scanned, a high is placed at inputs C1 and C5, which results in these two diodes being turned on. During this example, the rows were illuminated one at a time, since this is the system by which the character generator functions. However, the scan rate is so fast that all the LEDs in the unit appear to be activated at the same time. As you have seen, the individual LEDs are controlled by the inputs being placed at the row and column inputs. The dot matrix display has become popular due to its ability to display both alpha and numerical characters. The dot matrix unit also has the ability to display many other common symbols. Most character generators have the ability of providing 64 characters. The 64 characters displayed by the dot matrix unit are contained in a read-only memory which is contained in the character generator IC.